<laughs> Welcome to Conversation with Hate. We have an amazing songwriter, mobile award winning choir director, Volney Morgan and New You. Not only that, not only that, he's known not just in the UK, he's known in Europe. He's not only that, he's a pastor of a live city church, co pastor with, with Pastor Angel Morgan. He also has a son, Junior. They've got a YouTube channel. Come in. No, yeah, yeah. Come, come in. in. Yeah. See, see the research? This is the research that we do. <laughs> I introduce to you one of the great oh. diamonds that we have, not only just from fine directing perspective, but in UK gospel music. Mr. Thank you, man. It's nice to be here. Hey. I try to hit you with the energy in the intro. Listen, the energy's here. <laughs> the energy is here. Like, it's gonna be good. Like, so for those who don't know who you are, mm. tell them who is Bowling Morgan. Bowling Morgan is this uh, energetic, vibrant, funny. Um, and if I'm not funny to other people, I'm funny to myself. Um, no, nah. but um, just, just um... a block of uh, joy and love. And I say that because um, uh, I have a heart just for people. Like, yeah. and um, I think that's a big part of my character. Um, and that, that's who I am. Um, before I'm um, like pastor, director, leader. CEO or anything, I'm, I'm that person of like love. I want to give people that chance to love people and to have a good time, man. Just laugh. I, I, I just really think joy is a big part of life. Mm. If you're not happy, then like, what's the point? Like, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's real. So, so that's before me. we carry on, as you can see, we've got the kingdom over everything. Co London in today, yeah. Shout out to CEO. <laughs> you Pastor. Let me try it. Choir director, singer. <laughs> You might have heard him on some albums. Maybe, you know, just some. A few albums, a few albums, a few co-features. <laughs> you know, it's going to be crazy today. So, mm. you, you became a Christian. Mm -hmm. When did you become a Christian and why did you become a Christian? The question is, did I even become a Christian? Did I even get a chance to become a Christian? You or kind of just did. I felt like I was a Christian all my life. <laughs> like, I was, no, no word of a lie, um, I was born... Um, many people uh, throughout uh, the 80s will um, remember um, a church called White Lion Street. Okay. Um, and um, the church being International Festival Church of the Living God, that was my home church. Yeah. And um, so White Lion Street, there was like, um, it was the church in the basement and like a house upstairs. Yeah. And um, my mum uh, was living with family, which is, um, for those that know, Bishop Francis, mm -hmm. um, senior. Um, so she was living with them, that's her uncle. Yeah. And um, so that's where, that's where, when I was born, that's where I was living upstairs. Yeah. Um, I've got stories of people telling me how they used to come to the house. I remember uh, one time um, I was speaking to um, Jerry Brown, who plays drums. Yeah, he goes, yeah. oh my days, you're the baby in the crib. And I was like, okay. Like, he's like, yeah, like, we was like, when we had to meet up at church, like, you was the baby. And I was like, oh, wow. So literally when I say I was born, in church, I mean, I was born in church. So, um, so yeah, so I, I literally would say um, I've been in church all my life. Yeah. Church has been literally everything. Um, when I started relationship, like genuine relationship with God, I would say I was about, um, or awareness of uh, relationship with Christ, um, I would say about the age of nine, okay. when um, I chose to get baptised. Um, you guys start young, you know. Listen, listen. Nine. I, I was honestly, I didn't want to go to hell. That was like, man, you know, like back in the day, when like it was fire and brimstone. Like you're going to hell if you don't repent. You're going to hell, and it was just like I, I felt, I fell in love with the wrath of God before I fell in love with the love of God, and it was just mainly no, like real talk. Yeah, like, yeah. That was that was me. It was just like I can't go to hell. Like um, God, I'm gonna love you because I can't go to hell. So um, I think that's where it started. At the age of nine, yeah. um, I, I just, you know, chose to give my life and surrender. Nine. Yeah, nine. Like I had a life to surrender. Well, I did, but, you know. But nine. Mm, yeah. And ever since you've been... Yeah, ever since. Um, it's just been a constant relationship of uh, blunders, mistakes, enjoyment, um, lessons just all in one and it's been it's been exciting it's been great it's been great so how did you get to start in new year 
Like, so how does that even mm. come about? What made you start it? And how enjoyable was the early start or in this early stages of that? So the early stages, it was just fun. Like I was um, 16, mm -hmm. just coming out of secondary school, going into college and um, really and truly, I didn't want to like let go of my friends because everybody said like, you know what? Once you leave secondary school, you move to college, you kind of let go of those friends and you build like more foundation relationships. And I had some genuine friends at um, secondary school. So um, like my wife, who's, who was uh, at my secondary school, um, she was one of the first founding members. My boy Marcus, who sang in New Year, who, who I saw him, I saw him get married. His wife was in New Year, so they got now they got children and I got God babies. Like, so like these people, we 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 started New Year together. Yeah, my, yeah. my boy um, Yuri from Birmingham, um, he he moved down to London, and it's just like you know family members. Um, my cousin uh, Benita, my sister Dawn, like we just all joined together in this in my sister's apartment, right? And we just used one of her rooms as a rehearsal space, <laughs> and thus was New Year. <laughs> like that was New Year, and all we done was just write songs. That's wow. all we done was write songs, sing songs. We wasn't always perfect. We was very pitchy, but um, <laughs> that's that's what New Year was, and it was mainly because. Um, when I was starting this thing, it was just because, like, um, uh, like long story short, my uncle had a group. I'm not sure um, if you know uh, Clive Brown and Shekinah Singers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he had a group, and they were smashing. And I would always go to their rehearsals, and I loved choirs from from when I was free. I was directing, um, like, just jumping on the platform, directing the choir with uh, Clive Brown. Um, at my church, and so I grew up loving choirs. Hold on, hold on. you said three. Yeah, from the age of three. Yeah, so so <laughs> I'm telling you, we do things early, like as Christians. I'm like, trying to imagine small morning mortgages. Just... Listen, I will I will send you a clip of me directing. I will send you a clip. If you send me the clip, it's going it in this, can, you know. You know what? It's it, going it, in it this. It may be like it might. I pray it don't go viral, but it, <laughs> it will be one of those ones. I had like a shiny suit, shiny grey silver suit. <laughs> Uh, anyway, like literally, so he had a choir and um, uh, I remember um, it was great. Like we went Poland, I went Poland for the first time in Europe for the, uh, for the first time. Yeah. Um, and I was dancing back then. And um, basically, long story short, um, he basically like uh, retired the choir and was just like, yeah, um, I feel like it's the time where um, I'm going to just retire the choir. And, um, and, I, and that was like my world crumbling because I was like, no, like, Mondays are for rehearsal. Like, that's what kept me out of trouble. That's why I wasn't going gallivanting, as they would say, everywhere. I would go to rehearsals and just sit at the back and just listen to harmonies and songs and arrangement and, and songwriting. You're just and absorbing I, it like a sponge. Yeah, just loving it. And then when that came to an end, I was like, nah, then I've got to start something up because, like, something has to continue. So I started New Year out of that, and it wasn't even called New Year. Back then, it was just friends coming together. And um, <laughs> lo and behold, we just kept on rehearsing and singing. And then, uh, you know, as we do, we go to conventions and they say, hey, tell the young people them to sing. And yeah. we went up and we sang. <laughs> and it was, it, was, it was what it was. And again, like, we just done things. And I think my heart was, the church I come from was very old school. Got you. So it was like, I was very vibrant and I was just annoyed at just doing things just very kichinge, kichinge, kichinge. Hola! Yeah, you know the ones, you get it? So, so like, it was that, and it was just, for me back then, I just wanted to be everywhere else but there, because I was like, all my friends, like, they, their church has got bands, and yeah. they're having praise breaks, and we would only have a praise break at convention. Like, yeah. home church, Whoops. Home church. Home church would literally be um, home church would literally be my granddad who played the banjo. Yeah. yeah. And um, we didn't have no drums. We didn't have no. Um, we had a Hammond, a Hammond organ yeah, yeah. that no one played. No one knew how to play. And there was this lady 
um, I love her to bits, um, Sister Flemings. Um, she didn't know how to play the hammer, but she would just go. Uh, 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 she give like, you something. Listen, and then with my granddad, and I was just like, this is church. Yeah. And um, I got to a point where I was just like, no, nah, I just want more. I tried to leave. My mum didn't let me leave because she was, the, she was um, I think she was assistant pastor at that time. Oh. And I was just like, I'm leaving. Like, I'm, go- I'm going to new tea. Like, I'm, I'm leaving. And, and I remember like one time my mum just said, um, no, nah, you can't leave. And then I, I, I managed to get to a point where she's like, all right, if you're going to leave and you're going to church, at least you're going to church. Yeah. My dad, who don't go to church, he goes to me, you're not, go- you're not leave. And I said, but you don't go to church though. And he was just like, nah, like, as long as you're in this house, you go to your mother's church or wow. you don't leave the house at all. And I was like, then I don't leave the house at all then. <laughs> and he's like, you're going to church. And I'm like, well, <laughs> that don't make sense. Yeah, you got no, yeah, that's, the, that's the worst you know what I'm saying? No <laughs> choice. So that was, that was just like the beginning. So New Year was like my kind of getaway yeah, yeah. to kind of like sing new songs and and like do like a little vibrant thing so that it was really my escape Mm -hmm. it was really my escape so yeah no that's so and that's crazy that you say Mm. that as well because the fact that church was how it is Mm. and you didn't feel like even though church is how it is i want to go out and do Mm. something that's secular or not Mm. not gospel you just was like i want church Mm. but i want it in a certain format yeah does that make sense so then what happens is you guys then you build your new year Mm. You build, you build, you get yeah. your family, you get your friends. Yeah. Then you win a mobile. See, that comes... And the thing like is, the process... And, yeah. and I even, I'm even i jumping mm. the process. Yeah. So yeah. talk to me about the process, how, like, what was... So the pro... that And that's a massive process because, again, like, at the start, it was never... It was never this, okay, um, New Year's going to be this group, this world-renowned group. Yeah. New Year was my kind of outlet. I had I wrote songs. I just wanted people to listen to the songs. I didn't think about recording it. I didn't think about uh, copyright. I didn't think about nothing like that. It was mainly solely just to sing these songs. I didn't play keyboard. I didn't know how to play keyboard. Still don't know how to play keyboard. But um, I knew how to play around yeah. and get a sound out that that complemented my song. Mm. And um, that's what happened. And then obviously moving into moving into college now. Um, My first year of college, I didn't even go for music. Like, every time I tell people what I went to college for, they look at me and they laugh. And and don't laugh, but I went to college to study leisure and tourism. What was the plans with that? The plans with that, I wanted to work on either a cruise ship or be an air steward. Um, That died very quickly. Um, (laughs) I I, I just, I loved flying. Hold on, I loved flying. I want to say that first. you just trying to get the free flights? (laughs) Yeah, I didn't think about, like... (laughs) Every day you'll be on a flight going to a country. And that's what I loved as well, knowing that, oh, I'm going to this country, going to that country. I think the first thing I wanted to be is a pilot. And then I realised how much you had to study. And I was like, nah, that ain't happening. So the next best thing was like an air Let me just be on the plane. You know what I'm saying? Just be on the plane. <laughs> so like, and, and literally that was, that was me. And slowly but surely, I saw that my life wasn't going in that direction. So then like, I, I'd done leisure and tourism and then where, where I could have done it another year, mm. um, I didn't. I, um, I, w- I went and done music. So um, I started again back in college, mm. wanted to do music. And it was then I met um, Adrian and I met um, Jess. Well, I met uh, Adrian prior because he played at our church convention or one of our meetings yeah. prior. And I met him before then. And then um, Jesse, um, I didn't really know much about Jesse. Um, I knew his family, but I didn't really know much about him. And then um, his sister was there, yeah. um, Bex, and uh, my boy Byron. So it was like, there was like a little community there as well, of churchgoers. So obviously I've got a group, there's like churchgoers at college, and all we would do is meet up, sing on our breaks and stuff. And I thought, yo, like, I think you guys should just join New Year. And then thus it became like this, this formed group now where... Like, I had more singers and, and like, we expanded. Yeah. And I feel like we expanded more even musically um, uh, because we had, like, um, we had musicians prior. And, and the funniest thing, I don't know why I always go to Birmingham, but um, I don't know if, like, for those of you who remember the Hutchinsons, mm. like Daniel Hutchinson yeah, plays yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Andre, Andre Hutchinson drums. plays drums. They was actually our first band, our very first band for New Year. 
like they was our first band and their brother, I can't remember his name, but he's, I think he's moved to Canada now. Okay. They was like, or their cousin, I think it was their cousin. And they was originally our first band, the Hutchinsons. And it was dope, like, and it was hard for us to like do stuff like yeah, from yeah, Birmingham yeah. and we was young as well, no one was driving. So, um, so it started there and um, lo and behold, um, like again, Ace was there and um, Jesse was there and then obviously Jesse's brother plays bass and like for us, we're just like, just kids, innit? Yeah. So we're like, cool and it's like, yeah, but um, Joey, like he plays for Jill Scott and all of these people. So we're like, so, so and, and this is what I loved about, um, I would say I loved about Joey is because he came in and he, even though he had so much under his belt at a young age, mm. he, was, he was just real, like a humble guy, like a big brother to us all. So, um, like, we had, like, this whole band unit, then we had the singing unit, and then, like, we would come together, and whatever we came together with was nuts, crazy, and just absolutely gifted and talented. So um, that was just something that I think was, it was unheard of mm. as young people in um, the UK. There was people that was doing stuff, but, um, like, for this group that didn't come from a church, mm. but they came from different churches, it was pretty unheard of. So New Year was kind of like, I would say, um, like, kind of its first of its kind kind mm, of thing. And, definitely. Um, especially when the things we was doing on stage was, was jumping off people's pulpits. You really and was. Even, even <laughs> your, um, your first headline concert, I can't remember where it was, but I was there. Yeah. And I just you was there? Yeah, I was there. Oh, I was there. So I just remember that all of a sudden... People, there's dancers, there's dancers. Now people are jumping off, running down the aisles. <laughs> and I'm like, hold on, hold on, what's going yeah. on here? And he's just like, and it's like, you give a cue. Yeah, as soon yeah. as you give that cue, it, it just everyone's hey, gone. And I was just like, yeah. what's going on? And then, the, it, oh, it was yeah. just, because at that point, I knew Jesse, Joey, mm. and I knew Ace, mm. but I didn't know who he had on guitar. So mm. I was like, okay. Because yeah. I'd seen you as a, yeah. I said three of them together. Yeah. like. So I was like, okay, so now this is yeah. a, this is a whole band thing. Like, okay, yeah. this, okay, where's everyone going? Yeah, what was it? How come? It, it, <laughs> it was just that. It was that, and, and who we had on gets, um, I think it was Curtis, and he was dope. Yeah. Like he just came in and just smashed it, joined yeah. the unit, smashed it. Um, but yeah, as you said, like we, that's that that was us. Because we no, was just crazy. No, no one was, bar, like, no one was doing what you was doing. Yeah. So yeah. like the closest that everyone was comparing you to was Ty Trivet. Exactly. Everyone was like, oh, this is the UK version yeah. of Tide Shiver and, yeah. and GA. So it was just like, okay, mm. cool. But then it's not because you're totally different. Yeah. And you win a mobile award. Like, let's go back to that. Yeah. Let's, let's not skip past that. So, so literally, like, time goes by. Um, we, we, we grow and, and we grow with growing pains. So there was, um, there was a time where, uh, where, like, people left and people came. There was a time where New Year went literally on a sabbatical where um, I literally dismembered the group for a year and just said, look, we're not doing nothing. Um, the band, we separated from the band and it was, it was a hard thing. It was a hard thing. And I know a lot of people was like, oh, we never hear you talk about that. And I'm like, literally, it was one of the hardest things ever. Yeah. And um, uh, th things like that happened. And then what, what it seemed like was like friendships kind of was, um, was detached as well. So it was like, you didn't know if like you could call someone bro or friend again or sister. It was or, that, it was that. It was, it was that. And, and, and I say it because it was a part of our growing pain. Yeah. It's a part of our history. It's a part of something that happened. And I love each and every person that has, that has sung behind a mic, played behind an instrument. Um, again, like back to the Hutchinsons, I love each and every one of these people that have joined this, um, this journey. Because mm. without, without these people, there is no Vony Morgan and New Year winning a mobo. Mm. And I say that because I feel like when people get an opportunity like this to like, you know, have a conversation, not like play music, but yeah. have a conversation, they forget that. Mm. They forget hist history. And I feel like it was everybody who came in that worked hard, that um, allowed us to put music out, that helped us premiere gospel and all these other radio stations that um, uh, gave us our first like, headline concert. These were the people that kind of put us out there that enabled us to to do what we love doing and have a platform to do what we love doing mm. and it was that road to the mobile you know what I'm saying and it was a thing where if I'm honest with you it was it was it could have been a it was a frustrating role sometimes yeah because a lot of times we was working hard we was doing so much and um and that's away from the energy you're putting yeah. into when you minister on, yeah, on the stage yeah we was doing so much and I felt like 
although we was doing uh, what we was doing and everybody was loving like New Year's, I've only walked in New York, oh my gosh, those guys are crazy. It was almost like, what, one thing that people didn't know is like when they would have like Americans over and all of these people over, it was almost like, shove only walking in New Year in the back. Don't let nobody see them. And it was like, I think that broke really? our hearts the most. Like, so we would just be like, I remember there'll be times where we'd sit down and be like, you know, one day they're going to know. And like, we, <laughs> it was crazy because I remember us be like, nah, they're going to know. They're going to know about us one day. Don't watch, don't watch that. They're going to know. And like, we was, it was heartbreaking because we put everything into New Year. And we'd done so much. Like, we, did, we wasn't signed. We didn't have no record label. Things was coming out of our own pockets. You know what I'm saying? And, um, so that journey to the mobile was very much um, a family effort of just staying consistent. Mm. Even when nobody gives you praises, you still, you still sing, you still worship, you still do what you're meant to do. Because at the end of the day, although we wasn't seeking for praises, mm. we, was, we was almost seeking for um, uh, uh, um, to be accepted. Yeah, accepted. And for people to just be like, you know what? Those guys are actually really good. Those yeah. guys are really doing something. You know what? Those guys are something that we can be proud of and say they're UK. And, and sometimes that's what you want. Yeah. Because you just want people to acknowledge yeah. that which we're trying to do something here. Yeah. We're not saying, give us all your money. Yeah, yeah, that, exactly that. We're not saying, give us your money. We're um, saying, but, just see that yeah. we're here. Yeah, and, and that's what it was. So for us, it was, um, and we was young again. Like, it was just working hard and obviously... Like we done, we done EPs upon EPs, and then we stepped out, launched out, and done the album. And that again, we done it ourselves. Um, I remember like going up and down the motorway. Now we got cars, so going <laughs> up and down the motorway to either Birmingham or Nottingham to go to Ace's studio and like work on the album. And and just I remember working so hard for that project. I remember even just to have the live recording. Yeah, I was working. I was working at um, Apple at the time. And I remember just working and working and working and I, I saw this paycheck come in and I was like, yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. And then, yeah, this needs to be paid for. That needs to be paid for. That needs to be paid for. And then I remember going back to my account and being like, okay, uh, where's the money go? Like everything, like, and I remember, I, I specifically remember it coming in one day. It was the 26th because we got paid. Yeah. Um, and then the next day it was gone. That's how quick it happened. And I was just like, I literally sold my all into this choir, into this, into this group. And I tried to do my very best to, to make sure that there was things that people can just come to and just be like, uh, feel like it was home for them. Because there was a lot of people, we, when we came to the group, we were broken. We were young people, we were broken. There had been a lot of things that had happened to mm. individuals and it was like a family group. So it was almost like a getaway as well. So um, yeah, so leading up again to to the to the album, and then the album goes out, and then people love the album, and then we put out uh, the next album, which is the deluxe, and people go crazy. It's like, oh, this is great, and great, and what have you, what have you, and then it's almost like we hear nothing. Mm. It's like it was a great album, and then we hear nothing, and I'm like, I think it was um, like after um, we're not in, we're not in like it's not that we were searching for it or seeking for it, but we're not in. Uh, your your listings for uh, who can win a mobile and stuff like that. And we're not in the listings for those or stuff like that. And I was like, what? That's crazy. But anyway, years happen. Years later, we get nominated for mobile, and it's like, oh, cool. Like we've been working hard. We've been yeah, going yeah. crazy. We've been doing our tour and stuff like that. And then um, I think it was uh, I can't remember all the people that was in it, but I know it was us, Governor, and two other artists. Triple was in it. I think no, Triple was in the next next year. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah. so this was the year before. So. We're up for a nomination and um, we're like, yeah, we're almost sure. Like, yeah, like we, we deserve this one. This is our year. And then we, we go to the, um, the mobiles. Uh, well, we, it was the pre-mobiles at that time. And um, we see these celebrities and stuff like that. Like, hey, this is good. This is wonderful. They asked us to perform as well. So we performed. We, we done, um, uh, after all, I've been through. Yeah. Amazing. Like you've got people in the second industry looking at the gospel industry. Like, right. who, who is this choir? Not even just who is this who is this person because mm. a lot of times they see like before Kingdom Choir yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that you're looking at uh, songs of praise you know what I'm saying you're not seeing like a choir <laughs> you know what I'm saying so like when they see like New Year they're like I remember a tweet 
was um, uh, I just came from the mobiles and this group, who's a gospel group, like was up there just as much as anybody else. Mm. And I was just like, wow, like you got all these celebrities uh, reposting and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, dope. However, that mobiles, we didn't win. Oh, yeah. We didn't win. Um, we sat at the back and we kind of was like, um, okay, if we're about to go out for this award, surely we should be a bit closer because it's going to be a long <laughs> way to walk to the front. <laughs> And and then um, and then laugh. I think that year it went to Gov and um, I should laugh. And it was, so, <laughs> but that's what it was like. We were I, thinking, I, how, how does this work? I, like, can, I can see the picture in my head. Yeah, I mean, and you're, still... you're kind of like you've seen the movie, so you're like, surely someone comes up to us and goes, listen, like like um, Sister Act, like teacher says, take off your robes. Nah, we was expecting someone to be like, yeah, just get ready. We're... Nah, it was it was it was crazy. Like I've been there. And, I've been there. You know what I'm saying? And, and we've, we felt like, you know, you've just like rubbed shoulders with like Shaka and all these people yeah. and, and like you've got all these artists there and you're just like, ah, oh, cool. Cool, my well, world's are great. So we're thinking that was our only chance. Like, you know, but we just looked at it and like, well, you know what? We keep, on, we keep it moving. We keep it going because we understand as much as there's artistry, there's ministry yes. and it's ministry. So it's like we keep on doing what we've been doing. Mm-hmm. So then um, I think... The year after, we're nominated again. Yeah, and then that was a year. Triple's my nominated. Yeah, Triple, Lorene Kato. Yeah. Um, and then watch this, Marley Music and us. And I'm like, yeah, we might as well just leave it now. Like, that's, that's just not happening. So um, even when they was like, yeah, we want you guys to turn up and just come out and stuff. And, and then even this was, this was kind of like me saying, yeah, it's not us and it's not not for us because they was like this time we don't want the team we just want two people so I was like yeah it's not happening it's not happening so we end up going to the mobiles and um, that year and I thought you know keep up appearances you know on the red carpet um, um, shout out to um, Ramel London um, who interviewed us mm. on the red carpet um, now she's a member of my church which is absolutely crazy she wasn't a member then but um, later on how that played out anyway so um, so um, yeah so so we're sitting at the table and um, uh, sitting across from like uh, I think it was uh, uh, Chris Bank, uh, Chris Eubanks Jr. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you've got Craig David and you've got all these celebrities again, and I'm like, cool. But this time we're closer to the stage, and I'm just you did, that that didn't even nah. I'm just I'm just here with my wife, and I'm just like, you know, what, we might as well eat what we can and just enjoy this free course because you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Network out here, you know what I'm saying? Just, just hey, I love your music, you know, and. Um, yeah. And we're there chilling. And then, but what we realise is that, like, all of the other artist friends are, like, in the back of the room. And um, I was like, I know what that feels like. But at the same time, it's not clicking with me. And we're there, we're chilling. And then um, it comes up to gospel and stuff like that. And then they say, Vony Morgan, the new year. And I'm like, nah, they got that wrong. They must have got that wrong. Because Marley Music was in there. And I was expecting them to do like a, like a TV one where yeah. it's like, yeah, Marley couldn't be here today, but he sent us a video. So I was like, <laughs> so I'm thinking, yeah, Marley's definitely got that. And Mar- Marley was smashing it. Yeah, like yeah, he'd yeah. been smashing it. So, um, so when they said Ronnie Morgan and New Year, I went up there and I think I remember this distinctly because my godmother had just died. Okay. And like she was one of like the most um, influential people in my life who continued to push me, continued to be like, son, you could do anything. Mm. Let nobody tell you you can't do anything. And um, so I was going through that season. I was just like, oh man, <sighs> it is what it is. Like, you know, still live life and whatnot. So when I went up there and they said, Ronnie Morgan knew you, I was like, you know what? Like after the season that we, I've just gone through, mm. like even though everything's been great, like one of the greatest people that I loved like, they wasn't here, kind mm. of thing. But I was like, you know what, God? Like, I still give you glory. I still give you honor. I still give you praise. And it wasn't the fact of, now we've just won a mobile. It wasn't like, oh, now, like, our fees go up. No, it no. was more like, now they have recognized us for something that we have been working hard for. Mm. And not we was working hard for the mobile, but we've been working hard at our craft, doing what we've been doing because we have a passion and we have a love. Because we never stop. Mm. We continue. And um, so that was that was the stable point of okay, we've won a mobile, yeah. and now everybody's like, oh my days, Ronnie Morgan and he's won a mobile, and now we're on that list of artists that have won a mobile. And I was like, that was great. And even though that was good and that was great, it was still like, but God. And I remember saying this to God. I said, God, I thank you for the awards, and I thank you 
for the things that we won because I think that year we won a couple of awards yeah, actually because yeah, yeah. you won the UMA as yeah. well yeah, yeah so we won a couple of awards and it was great and I said but God it all means nothing if I win all of this and lose my soul mm. just like the Bible says what does it profit a man that he gained the whole world but lose his own soul mm. so in that season my, my whole focus was God now I need to deflect you even more I need people to see you inside of me even more mm. and I think that's where my passion was from then on it was more how do I how do I now show Christ like never before mm. in my life and then we went on that series of New Year where it was just like yo like yeah we do music but we're heart people mm. and um, we never stopped just doing even more things and just being more creative and I think that's what um, the mobile taught us is that after you've won something um, and you've got that recognition don't now change. Mm. Don't now, oh, well, like, we're one of the UK's best. Like, you ain't, nah. It's, it's what are you going to do now? Yeah, exactly. It's, what's your response to that? Mm. You know what I'm saying? How do you respond to that? Are you going to become one of those people where it's like, yeah, like, yeah, I, I can't sit next to you in an event or I can't talk to you, like, you know what I'm saying? And, and I've seen it. I've seen it. And it's like, yo, we all go to the same church. Let's calm down. Okay, so it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's more, it's more like, now we show Christ more yeah, than ever yeah, yeah. before. Because now you've got the platform. Yeah. Because now it's like you've won a mobile, so mm. more people are going to look at you that mm. didn't know you before this. Yeah. So if anything, you should be pushing the name of Christ. Exactly. Harder than you were before. Deflecting Christ like never before, like showing him that there's a mirror and as he shines on you, you're just shining, mm. shining back on him. And he's like, look, this is, I'm not the source of this, he is. So yeah, so that was, that was the journey to the mobile. That's crazy. Mm. So you get to the mobile, so how does your mindset change or does your mindset change since becoming a husband and a father mm. in terms of New Year? This, I think, yes. Okay. Um, because I realise now that we're no longer kids anymore. Mm. And I think that was something to take in. That was a strong pill to swallow mm. because it's a thing where it's like, we can get away with a lot of stuff. When you're, when you're an adult and when you're uh, a parent, now it's not the same anymore. Like, whereas we would be in Birmingham and they would put us on last. And last sometimes meant 1 a.m. in the morning or 12 a.m. Or, or, or if it's a New, new Year's. <laughs> or New Year's. The, or new Year's. <laughs> it's new, five, we, six we can't even talk morning. about New Year's because <laughs> the amount of times we've been on stage at 5 a.m. Nah. In, in, in Birmingham. Right outside. <laughs> Wait, and, but you know what's been crazy and one thing I've loved about Birmingham especially Birmingham like you could put us on at like 4am or 3am in the morning in Birmingham and like there's people still out there yeah. ready to go and I'm like we're tired because we've we've probably done our, uh, our New Year's tour so we've probably you've done, done like, a circuit you've been yeah. here then you drove down yeah. Then, yeah. you know what I'm saying we've done like four churches prior so now now we're about to do our last set so New Year's already mash up and these people are like yo we're ready to go so like, so yeah, so becoming a parent now is a thing now where uh, certain things we have to put in like our booking guidelines. So it's like when people's like, um, oh, we, we want you to come and, and, and go on last. And we're like, what time is last? Like last is about 10 o'clock. I like, want you to close out the show or close out the service. And I'm like, yeah, we can't do that. Like not at 11 o'clock. Um, and people are like, oh, like why? Like, and I'm like, because... We, we got kids. And mm. here's the thing. We, we, we're such a family. We carry our kids. Yeah. So, like, there's been times where I've seen, like, kids be laid out on two chairs. <laughs> just, yeah. And we still got to go on. And we're tired. The kids, are, they're just, they're, they're, they've loved the music. So, yeah. they've enjoyed the day. But now it's like, we're tired. So, we've got, we've not only got children, but next day, we're all serving at church. We're either on the praise and worship team. We're either preaching the next day. So it's not like the youth that we were where we had no cares in the world. We're just going back to church. But we have responsibility. So mm. now we have to like, like the mindset has changed. So now I've got to kind of think about, okay, this person needs to get back home. That person needs to get back home. They, they got this in the morning. And whereas I line up to you, there's been times where we're, we're hitting, I'm hitting my door like at, at um, eight, nine o'clock in the morning. I remember one time, because what people didn't used to know as well, is I used to drive the van. So, like, after we went crazy, after we got tired, 
I'd be like, all right, me in Let's the van. Go. Let's go. And, um, and, and that wasn't always the case. The earlier years, it was our, um, our pastor, our co-pastor, um, Edith, um, Pastor Edith. And she was amazing. She brought us everywhere around the world. She just always in, in that van. Jeez. I remember one year we went to Midnight Oil. In fact, our first year at Midnight Oil, this is a funny story. Um, first year to Midnight Oil, she drove and um, it was the, kind of the first place where um, I would say more, more people from uh, Birmingham saw us. But um, like we always used to be in our church first morning. So um, we went there, done a great had a great time and you know lift up the name of Jesus and it was great people were like oh my god you guys are amazing you guys are dope oh my god you need to come next year you need to do this year oh my god you guys oh, I haven't seen nothing like you and we're like oh thank you god bless you you know the humble like yeah. oh, god bless you man you know like, all praise to god you know it's only god it's only you know, god you know, you know yeah, the, the, the flip <laughs> and then I remember like after after um after the service like everybody's like going out and everything so like yeah we just had a, a great night we get to the van and the van won't stop. We get, I think this was um, BCC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The van won't stop. And there's like a hill yeah. next to the church. So, um, so like, uh, Pastor Edith was like, look, the van's not starting. We need to push start it. Now, here are people that just came off stage and we just had a great time. And now you see those same people pushing a van down the hill for the van to get started. We literally had to push the van. The van, <laughs> the van starts. And then we all have to like, have you seen Cool Runnings where yeah, they all have to just... jump in? So now we all have to jump in the van so that the van doesn't shut off. And I was just like, Lord, this is just, this is just humility at its best. Mm. Because it's, it, there's moments like this throughout New Year history that has just, it's there to remind us. It's, it's just Don't brilliant. go beyond yourself. You know what I'm saying? So that was a great, that was a, one of the great ones anyway. So yeah, I'll, I'll leave that there. So, so. I want to kind of talk about mm. marriage and obviously you and Angel both being in the group. Mm. So I want to talk about what are the three main things you learned about yourself mm. in the marriage? Mm. And is there anything you, you had to kind of change to make it work, whether it's because you guys were in the group or X, Y, and mm. Z and, and those types of things? What are mm. the three things you learned about yourself? Three things. Um, I think one of them would be um, Voni, the world doesn't revolve around you. Oh wow! And you have to, you have to give other people time. Mm. Um, and I feel like growing up as a, um, as, as uh, the only child for my my parents. Um, mm. I got a sister for for my father, but um, I, I always grew up around network of family, mm. um, and we always used to have family over, but. I always had that thing of this mentality of okay for my for my parents I'm the only child yeah. so it was like there was a lot of things that I got away with yeah. and there was a lot of things that didn't take process because it was a thing where it's like hey focus on me please yeah. and in the midst of uh, my my mother uh, being a pastor so like her focus went elsewhere not that she didn't uh, uh, do great as yeah, a parent yeah, yeah. she was a oh, to this day like probably if, if it wasn't for her there'll be no new year and I'm not talking about just because she had me I'm talking yeah. about the amount of times I went to her and said mom look we need to get this project out and like this project needs to you know yeah, what I'm saying and she'd be like alright alright yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying yeah. so she's always been there but I think I, I've always been someone that's always on the move mm. and like if I think it I'm a dreamer I'm gonna go straight for it mm. I don't kind of process, process. things <laughs> and um, I think with my wife with Angel she taught me that you have to process things. Um, I've always been like, um, you know, the Bible says, write the vision, make it plain. Mm -hmm. That those that see it will run with it. And, and it's, it's so that when you have a vision, other people can like understand where you're going, the direction you're going. A lot of times, because I was so used to just doing things by myself, I would literally have the vision in my head, but not kind of write it down for people to see it. So like, even in marriage, it was a thing where it's like, Yo, I know where we're going. I know where we're going. And she'd be like, I have an idea of where we're going, but you need to like, we Let need to break in. this yeah. down. Like, yeah. you need to tell me what's going on. Where are we going? Like, yeah. what, what, what's our vision? Like, mm. where are we going together? And not just uh, you feeling like you have to have everything on your shoulders and carry everything. And um, I think that was something that 
um, it taught me a lot that I need to, as I process, or I need to process things and process it with my wife mm. and not feel like, if you don't get it, oh, that's it, man. Like, ugh, like I'm just going to do it anyway. No, I had to like sit down and be like, okay, like, babe, this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to work it. And I think my fear was because I didn't like people telling me no. Mm. I didn't like people telling me it might not work or or say if this happens. Would that then push you to just do it anyway? Yeah. And and that's that's where I found that a lot of things I'd done, I'd, I, I kind of wrote things up and <laughs> drew things up and then kind of been like, say yes to approve it. Not, what do you think? Just say yes to approve it. Because I was scared that you would tell me, no, mm. it wasn't going to work. Or, or it needs more time. And I, I, I was always a right now person. I didn't like to spend time on something. I wanted it out now. I wanted to do it now. But she taught me how to process things and give things time. Mm. And one thing that I've learned that time does, it brings longevity. And one of the things that we do as humans, we make a mistake by just trying to think of something. We've seen someone else do it. Let me jump on it straight away. We don't think of the future or the longevity of it. So now we're great today, but tomorrow you never knew we'd done it. You know what I'm saying? So that's one of the things that I learned f from this marriage, from this woman, is that it goes beyond just two days of greatness. Mm. It goes beyond just a year of, oh, we got married, everybody's seen your pictures, oh, you've had a great wedding, to now, like, you have to stick at this thing. You mm. have to, like, bring longevity in it. You have to spend time in it. And even though we, we've, we've been best friends, you know what I'm saying, we've been best friends, even when, even when I've had, um, uh, I had, um, or I was looking to pursue another yeah. woman, Another woman. I remember I went to her oh, and I was like, oh, there's some tea here. People are like, oh, it got good. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Even when I was looking to pursue someone else, I remember I went to her and I goes, look, I'm looking to pursue this person. Um, what do you think? Thinking back now, I'm just like, Vonnie, what was you thinking? Like, so, wait, was... hold, hold, hold. I know, hold. I know. It's a, people hold are like, tea, on. like. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> it's like DJ H is bringing them in. Hold on. So, you're yeah. saying there weren't no signs to say that Angel liked you at the time? No, see, here's the funny thing. Like, we grew up as friends. We yeah. grew up as friends from secondary school. Yeah. And then, um, and then, like, she's gonna hate the story, but I'm gonna say it. <laughs> like, I remember, like, our last day, you know, you have a school prom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, our last day, I was looking like, came in, like, trying to do. Mm. Back then, obviously, you had to wear a suit and stuff. Mm. So, I went in and, like, we done, we done prom and, like, yeah, and just before I was about to leave, um, Angel said, nah, you're not leaving without giving me a dance. Um, and I mock her all the time because the way she said it... <laughs> what does this sound like? Does this not sound like my story? Does this not sound like me and my wife? Sasha, this is me and you. Vaughn is talking about she, me and you. I don't know literally. how. She's talking about me and you. <laughs> literally, she's like, you're not leaving. But I always make fun of her because her voice is like this. You're not leaving me. Like this. <laughs> and I was like... I was genuinely like... Okay, and I was dancing with all these other girls. At hold prom. on, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You were dancing with all these. No, other okay, girls. not all these. I don't want to make it sound like it was. Just, it, was it wasn't like a bump and grind. No, it wasn't like that. It was like it was like yo, hey, hey, two dancing step, in the circle. Two yeah, step, two step. Yeah. Let's, let's oh, keep it arms left. Yeah, arms left. For for um, my son's gonna grow up and, and watch stuff like this. So um, so so yeah, she's like, you're not leaving without giving me that. So I was like, um, I was like, cool, but this is what was hilarious and I remind her of it all the time. She looked genuinely like a missionary. Like one of the missionaries from church. Right. She had, um, she had, I love your wife, you know I do. Um, she had like, I think it was this flowery kind of- The um, lung, the lung yeah. to the ankle. Yeah, and while all these oh. other girls are wearing like, you know, to the knees, blouse, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You're like, hey, we're dancing tonight. Like she, came in like looking genuinely like she was looking to save someone and bring wing their souls over to Christ that night. Oh. And um and I remember like just like she had the show that the show that matched the the, um, the dress and oh. it was just hilarious. And she had braces back then as well. But anyway, that doesn't matter. Um <laughs> so so we was we was dancing and it was just like it was cool and like we was just as friends and um it was hilarious like obviously later on because we was always good friends. Yeah. Later on obviously like um, when I when I said we had uh, rehearsals in my sister's house, mm. I remember like 
um, inviting her and she came and like opened the door and I was like, that's not how you looked at prof. And it was like, there was a glow up in the Lord. And like, I was like, yo. And it was, it was at that moment that I thought, something has to change. <laughs> and like, my eyes were on her. Like, I was just like, nah, there's potential right here. You know what I'm saying? There's potential. I know it sounds bad. But um, I was like, we can do something. Yeah. So, um, so that was the story of like, us just growing, growing together. Mm. So through that, we were friends. And, and by friends, I mean like, people I was talking to, I'd be like, yo, I'm talking to this person. What do you think? Because girl got discernment. Like, mm. home girl has got discernment. And when I say, I speak to her, I'd be like, yo, like, what are you saying today, prophet? Like, what's going on? And she'd be like, that person, something, something ain't right in my spirit with that person. And I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, she would be right. And mm. like, so I would literally go to her and just be like, yo, like, um, um, I'm pursuing this person because we was genuinely friends. But th- at this point, we had already dated. So it was like we broke up and then I was just like, look, I'm, we, was, we still had that friend. Still like, had that, good that friend. bond. Yeah, 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 yeah. we still had that bond. And um, it got to the point where um, that was looking like it was, it was, it was just going to veer off. And then I remember like, God bucked me up big time, man. And he, he showed me, he showed me a dream and he showed me her, he showed me her preaching mm. and I was on the front row and, um, and I was supporting my wife mm. and that was what he showed me. And I was like, yo, like, so like, what does that mean? And she meant to be my wife. Like he showed me specifically her. And, um, I looked at that image, that image didn't leave my head and it was that that made me know that, yo, okay, this is, this is actually it. And then when I looked back at all the foolishness um, I, I made her put up with, I was like, you know what, this is the one that, you know, through thick and through thin, mm. she's been there. Like, when, when, when I was nobody, when nobody knew who Volney Morgan was, mm. when nobody knew who Volney Morgan knew you was, when nobody knew who Volney, past the Volney Morgan is, she was that person constantly in the background, just constantly saying, look, make sure you're praying before God. Make sure you're, where's God in this? Mm. What's God saying in this? Oh, babe, I want to do this. I want to do an album. What, what did God say about it? Mm. Who, did, who did he say work with? Who did he, you know what I'm saying? He, she was that 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 voice of 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 reason like mm-hmm. when 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 god couldn't get through straight to me she was recent he, he, he was like okay you, you don't want to listen here's the speaker that's going to be real loud in mm. your ear and um here's and, your and, errand you know what i'm saying <laughs> so it was like so i would constantly be like yo she she kept me on a course that was just so so close to Christ. Mm. And that's why I feel like when we speak about, um, the Bible speaks about a help me in Genesis. He's talking about someone that should be able to keep you close or not even close on course. When they see that, look, we're going, we're, 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 we're veering off course. Mm-hmm. Like the heart of Christ, where is it? Mm-hmm. Like, let's make a, like a heart check. She's that person. And mm. that's what makes marriage to her beautiful and amazing. Nothing, there's not a dull moment because I'm the person I am. And again, it's very much, I'm the one who like has these dreams, have these visions, and mm. I'm like, yeah, I want to do this, I want to do that. And she's the one that just kind of says, okay, let's, let's look at this. Mm. Let's slow down, let's process this. So that's why I feel like we work together so greatly. And um, I love you, boo, when you're watching this. I love you. Jeez. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's been your biggest test of faith as a mm. family man, as a pastor, which we'll get on to, mm. as a choir director, songwriter, what, in, in all of this, what has been your biggest test of faith? And how did you get through mm. it? Uh, I would say my biggest test of faith has always been identity. Mm. Um, and why I say identity is because where everybody wants you to be one thing or their thing, mm-hmm. you're trying to fit all of these things together and say, who am I? Because we're looking at other people as mirrors and mm. we're thinking, okay, this person thinks I'm this person, this person. So how do I keep up with everybody's images of me? Yeah. And it becomes distorted when you try and get, um, have you ever tried to, try to get um, all of these cutouts and try and make them one thing and they don't align? Yeah. And that's because you're trying to be all these things that other people have told you you are. Mm. And um, the, the, the greatest fight of my life has always been okay, God, who am I really? Mm. 
who am I really? Not who does everybody say I am, but who am I really? Mm. And I feel like that has been the greatest fight because when I didn't want to be a pastor, I just wanted to be an artist or be a minister where I'm just singing. Mm. Um, God was like, no, I'm calling you out to pastor mm. a church. And I'm like, but that's not what every, that's not who everybody calls me. That's not who everybody looks at me and says that's I not am. What I see you, at you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So God, like, there's an identity crisis here. Mm. So I'm fighting with something that God has told me I am, but everybody else, they have their words have too much weight in mm. my life. And I feel like that's what we do in life is we allow people to have so much weight to their words, and we don't allow God to have the only weight in our lives. So um, with that, I think that was the greatest fight in my faith or uh, with me is finding out who I am. And I never forget um, a couple of years ago, Salt Light um, done this event with Travis Green mm. and we got to um, open up for him. And um, they had like, you know, they have the press room in the back and he sits down and he's talking to everyone. And he said this thing that blew me away. And he said, the greatest thing that he ever got delivered from was people's opinions. Mm. And that thing, it was like, you know when like something hits you, like that thing hit me. And I was just like, yo, like knocked, knocked me out of me. Like, I don't know if you've watched Doctor Strange from yeah. Marvel where, <laughs> where he, he hits her and his whole body just come. That's how it felt. And it was just like, yo, that's it. Mm. I need deliverance from people's opinions mm. because I care too much about what people think of me. Mm. I care too much of if it's if it's true or if it's false. You know what I'm saying? Some people are like, no, I know Vonnie to do this and he's not like that. And, the, and they're like, I'm trying to protect this reputation so much and um, uh, uh, someone else is saying, no, nah, this is him. And I'm like, no, that's not me. I'm trying to protect it. And I got too busy trying to protect stuff. My hands began to be full. Mm. And now I'm in a place where I'm like, Whatever someone says now, I'm trying to correct it in, in, in the way, trying to correct it and make someone's appearance yeah. of me be changed. And I'm like, it was tiring. It took too much energy and strength. And then on top of all of that, I found myself in like just small depressions, mm. like of just being in a place of like... Oh, like you can't live up to... I can't live up to everybody's expectation. And I'm already a PK. I'm already a pastor's kid. I've already been told, like, this is what you can do from this is what you can't. I've already been told all my life, like, mm -mm, I, don't, I don't agree with that because mm. th this is not the way of a child. Child of God should walk and how... And that, so I've fought with all so of that's these molded, things. So that's already you, molded your mind. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in a place where I'm, I'm, all I'm doing is trying to impress people with my works. Mm. And it got to a point where when I heard that, I was like, light bulb moment. And I said, I'm not doing it anymore. Mm. So when people was like, oh man, I love your music, but I want you to like, I want it to sound like such and such. Like, remember when you done, I'm like, that's not me anymore. Mm. I'm like, there's been, there's been growth. A, a growth. Mm. There's been a journey. If I continue to give you music from 16, when I was age 16, then that means I haven't grown as a person. Mm. So when you hear something, it's because I'm giving you my reality now. So um, I think that would be the biggest, one of the biggest things in my life is just coming over that factor of what everybody else says, it doesn't matter. I don't care. So I'm at that place now where I, I don't. I genuinely don't care. I, I love everyone. Don't yeah, get yeah. me wrong. But I genuinely, if you got something, I was like, I'll take it, and I'm like, oh, that, that's awesome, thanks. Mm. But I'm like, if I know now, I know who I am in Christ, mm. and I know who God has called me to be. I'm like, even when people's like, um, oh, this is what I see over your life, and this is what I see you going. I'm like, thank you. God bless you. And before I used to be like. Oh, thank so much god bless you because it was it was like it me was trying to express to them that ah oh, i'm holding on to your words and now i'm just like thank you I, I really really um appreciate it and it's more of a thing now where i'm kind of like i know who god has called me to be so mm -hmm. if it happens it happens that's great yeah. if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen but i already know i already know who i am you know so. what the craziest thing is as well is mm. what you were saying is people's opinions have the same weight as god's mm. which is a lot of people's crisis, mm -hmm. especially in the, in the age of social media, yep. of the, the Instagrams and X, Y, and Z, we need to get yep. this amount of likes. Yep. YouTube needs to get this amount of views. Yep. People look at it like, if I don't hit this, yep. then I'm a failure. Like, my or, value is this. Exactly. Or my worth is this. When their worth was already yeah. determined for them mm. by God from what he already said. There, there's something that I say all the time, and then um, my brother called out music, said this the other day on his um, Instagram, and he said, um, success doesn't come by what, what, um, how many likes or views you have, 
But when you have created something and you have put it out there, you are already successful. Mm. Why? Because something that was here, you allowed it to be manifest. You know what I'm saying? That's success. Mm. Because something that was from here, you brought it into this earth. And I say this all the time. It's a problem when we, when we live in this life and live in this world and we are stored up with all of these things in here and nothing was manifest in this earth. Mm. And that's why I always say, when I die, I want to leave empty. Mm. So when people are like, oh, Vonnie, you're doing that too soon. Vonnie, you're doing... I said, no, no, no. We're on a t- I'm, a, I'm on a time limit. I'm on a time frame where God has told me to do something and I'm doing it. So when people was like, oh, why did you start, start a church and stuff like that? And, and I was like, God, why am I starting a church? And he said, when you start something now, when you start to understand that, there's, there's some things you have to learn on the job mm-hmm. that you don't have time in 10 years later to be like, I'm just in it now. I'm like, okay, let's learn on the job. You don't have that time. Mm-hmm. There's things that I'm teaching you now that 10 years later, you'll be like, I've already been through that. I've, I, I've learned that lesson. I know that. Um, um, uh, I, I can face that and I know how to deal with that thing. Mm-hmm. And it's because you've had time to grow in it. You've had time to learn. You've had time to, uh, to adapt to who God wants you to be in that thing. Mm. So, um, so yeah, so I think it's a thing where, where I would encourage every and anybody that when it, comes to, when it comes to creation and creating things, don't wait for other people's approval. Mm. Because if it takes other people's approval to like it, for you to like it, then you're in it for the wrong reason. You're mm. doing it for the wrong reason. Love it because you love it first. Okay. When, when, God creates the, um, when God creates the world, he, he, he turns around and he's like, Mm. No, this is good. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't waiting for the angels to be like, guys, the guys, bomb. Guys, come and see, you, you come know and what, see what I've done. Just let me know what you think. You, you know what I'm saying? He, he created it and like, it is good. I don't care what anybody else says because whatever I speak is going to happen. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It is good. When you start creating something, you ought to say, this is good. Someone says, nah, that's trash. I don't like it. Psh, to you, whatever. But to me, this is good. Why? Because I, knew where, I know where it came from. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I know what it took to come out. And yes... Uh, people don't know how to appreciate anything no more because we're um, a popcorn or mm. a microwave generation where it's like, just give me, give me, give me. Mm. And, and, and we don't spend time to listen to something or hear something for what it really is. See something for what it really is. All we do is we take sound bites from people's lives and then we, then we kind of judge it and say, is that good or is that yeah, not good? Yeah, yeah. So, That's what they meant. Yeah. Did, did you really listen to the whole thing? Exactly. Or are you going to take 15 seconds? Mm. So now you've become a pastor. Mm-hmm. How? What's that like? It is the most amazing thing. Sorry, co-pastor. Mm. No, co-pastor. So, Let me make sure. Get oh, angel. pastor and co-pastor. Yeah, they're just angel. <laughs> pastor and co-pastor. <laughs> so, so, so now that now that um, I'm, I'm co-pastor with Pastor Ainge, um it's, it's one of the most amazing things. Mm. And people say to me, oh, it's because you're, you've, you've just like jumped into this. And I'll, I try and explain to people, um, before I became the pastor or before um, a live city church was founded, I actually was a minister mm. at my church. And here's the funny thing. Um, there was a lot of things that I was pastoring in that church. Mm. And, um, and I, I love, I, and I say this with hands held high, um, pride in my heart, I love the International First One Church of the Living God. That yeah. is my home, hands down. Nobody can tell me no different. Mm. Um, when people was like, oh, so why did you leave then? I was like, listen, the vision that God gave me, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't for there. And that's all it was. Mm. And, 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 and I, I would say that every day. Mm. When I was pastoring at, um, uh, or when I was um, like, Minister. uh, ministering at um, First One and at my mum's church, I was pastoring these young people I was pastoring these people that, that was doing crazy things and mm. trying to bring them into a place where it's like, look, like, look, this is what the Bible says. And this is what we've got to do. And this is what we, and, I, and little did I know, I was pastoring from even way back when I was doing New Year. Mm. And nobody sees David in the desert. People only see David in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so now when people see that I've got a church, it's almost like, yo, like, how come he's, he's pastor? And I was like, yo, you, you didn't see me in the desert. You didn't see me when I was at like 16 years old, mm. when the first thing that came up um, in ministry was when someone said to me, um, well, uh, Vo, like the reason why I don't like singing in churches is because I was abused mm. in the church. 
Um, in fact, I still got the, the, the scars right now mm. of where a family member done such and such in a church building. That's why I can't sing in a church. And I sit there and I'm like, God, what do you want me to do with that information? And it was from then, even in then, uh, even then, uh, God said to me, I'm bringing these broken people to you. Mm. And it's for you to help them along this journey. Some of them are going to come and some of them are going to go. But they all have a, a, a um, they all have a direction, a destiny of where they're going. Don't feel like you're a failure if someone comes and goes. Everybody has their seasons. Mm. And I remember because when I first started me, if someone came and if someone left, I was like, why are you leaving? I used to think it was me or I used to think it was the group. And God had to help me and be like, it's not you, it's not the group. People will come and people will go. And then I remember um, speaking to um, my mentor, um, Bishop John Francis. Mm. He said to me, listen, don't get, don't get to a point where you're so attached that when people have to leave and people, people come and people have to leave, that you feel like it's you. Mm. It's not you. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times people literally come because it's something that they had to be there in that season. Mm. He, he used this analogy of a scaffolding. A scaffolding holds up a building and sometimes um, it, its whole purpose is to hold up a building, is to allow you to help hold up a building, build the building. Once the building is finished, that scaffolding comes down. Mm -hmm. It's not that you used them or they was used or they used, used the church or anything, but they was there for a specific purpose and yeah. a reason. And that's something that people have to understand. Sometimes people are just scaffoldings in your life. Mm. They're there to help to make something fit, to help to make something better. They, they, they accomplish something and then they down. have to come down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, in those years of training and just being in church and, 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 and learning behind the ropes of church, mm. wow, behind the ropes of church and behind the curtain of church, um, it, it taught me a lot. So then when it was time for me to actually start a live city church, I told God no, mm. straight blank. I said, you said no. I said no. I said, yeah, it ain't happening. He was like, I'm, I'm calling you to start um, a live city church. And I said, oh no, he said a live city. And a live city sounded like another group. So I, I was like, I gave my ear, and then when it started going down the church angle, I was like, ah, oh, no, nope. that's, that's, that's not really me right now. Why? Because, again, everybody else's opinions mm. was more like, no, 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 you're about to, you're traveling now, you're going here and you're doing that, and now you're just breaking into Europe. So, so like, stick to that, leave the church thing alone. And I was just like, but this is what God is telling me to do. And um, it was one of the hardest things, especially for me and my mother as well, because, mm. like, like, me and my mother are like that. So when I had to tell her, mum, like, I'm thinking of leaving, she, she was like, yeah, well, yeah, leaving to go where? And I uh, know I'm, I'm leaving to start a church. She's like, start a church, that sounds good. That's all she heard, start a church. She didn't hear leaving. She, so she automatically thought, like, okay, it might be like a youth church that you're yeah. building up under. And I was kind of like, nah, it's, it's something different because the vision is different. And, and I saw my mum kind of look at me at, like I'm losing my son. Yeah. And one of the things I realized is that we had such a great relationship, but it was revolved around church, that when it came time for me to leave, it was a thing where it was like, what else do we have? Yeah. And that is when I, my mind was blown because I realized that, yes, I loved my mother, but I think what it was that I really done was I, I really loved and celebrated my pastor. So then when it was a time where I left, I still loved my mother. And I was like, I, I still got my mum. And like, no, nothing takes that away. But I feel like she felt like our bond was like, this is a son, but a son also in the faith. So when I left, when I left the church, it was almost like she lost a son. Mm. And like for, for a season, it just felt like, if, it, it felt like walking on eggshells. It felt like, really? yo, like, like mum, like, I remember one time we, we had church and like souls got saved, like one of our first services. I came back to my mum, like, mum, souls got saved. She's like, that's good. And I was just like, no, but mum, souls got saved. And even though she was happy, I think it was still like... There's still that hurt of the... You've left me. But, but here's, here's the biggest thing, and I understand why. Um, because just before I left, we was having the conversation of, I want you to now become a pastor here. Uh, and yes, it's something that's for the first time people are hearing, but it's something that people don't know. 
it was it was um uh, we want to train you up to still be success like a pastor. Had the, they had the succession plan yeah. and then and I think that's where it was really a hard thing. Mm. It was really a hard thing because it's like, okay, he's he's kind of the like this is the next generation. And and that was me as well. I was always the one saying, Yeah, I'm 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 ready to take up the bat and I'm ready to take it on and and really and truly I was, I wanted to. And I just feel like even in the season that things happened, I felt like I felt like the season where it where it could have and it should have, where I personally felt like it could have and it should have, it didn't. But I also believe that God has his plan. Mm. So when that didn't happen, and, and as, as, as I say again, I, I love Firstborn. And when that didn't happen and I started a Life City Church, I was literally trying to be like, no, I'm not. In fact, I had a church in mind that I was going to. And um, it wasn't like one of your big churches, but it was a church that I felt like I can go there and I can just serve like just I didn't, I didn't want to pastor I didn't want to just be yeah I, I just wanted to be if they asked me to sing on praise and worship once or twice I'd be like yeah sure like I'll serve but um that's what it was that's where my mind and my heart was mm. like I just wanted to be somewhere that um I can just serve and just have the freedom um and then when God told me that look calling you to start a church I told him no as I told you um, and then I'll never forget what he said next. And he was like, if you don't do it, I'll raise up someone to do it. And literally, when I heard that, it was no more arguments from then on. Mm. No more arguments from then on. And then again, the, the issue with that leading up to a Life Seat Church now was, now I have to prove myself again. Mm. I have to prove myself that I can be a pastor. I have to prove myself that I'm okay, that I can lead people. Not Forget the fact that I've been leading people for, for like half my life. Yeah. Um, but now it's like, well, who do you think you should be to? And I was like, and, and it was almost that thing where it's like, am I going to jump back in that bubble where I have to listen to people's opinions again? Yeah. But this was that first thing I stepped out on without listening, well, listening to, to, my, to, to my leaders. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want people to feel like he, he's, just, he's just a rogue cannon and he's just shooting up. No, like I have, I have, I have headship, I have leadership, yeah. I, I have covering. And that's important as well. You can't just be going out there thinking, yeah, I'm just going to start things however I want to start. I, I sought counsel. Mm-hmm. I sought advice from, from, from heavy fathers in the faith, mm-hmm. um, heavy mothers in the faith. What do I mean by heavy fathers and heavy mothers in the faith? People that have walked this journey for a long time. And, and I love them because they gave me their honest opinion, but mm-hmm. they also gave me what God said to them. Yeah. And, and a lot of it was, was very much, I'm scared for you to start something in this generation Mm. because I see what's happening in the world but in the honest truth I feel like you're called for this generation Mm. to handle what's been what's happening and I think that was what was a blessing because it was also seeing seeing assignment um I knew what my assignment was but also getting the confirmation of my assignment even in this earth so starting the life seat church man absolute blessing some of the most amazing people I lead some great creatives and mm. I think that's the church I lead is their they're church full of creatives. Their, their um, day jobs, their everyday living is being in front of a platform or creating something or being in front of people and it's an honour to, to lead people just like myself and even though I may not be called to some of these arenas mm. but to flip onto my TV and be like, ah, oh, they go to a life seat church. That's like an awesome thing because I see what their life is like behind behind the camera and I think that's what's a blessing to see um, in a church is when you can see growth and not everyone's perfect yeah there's people still growing but that's what's amazing and that's what's beautiful when you see the growth so yeah in another aspect of your leadership you start a clothing brand Mm. kingdom over everything so kingdom over everything is a lifestyle Mm -hmm. so um the tag for cold london is um wearing um uh, or wearing um, is uh, I forgot the tag. Um, um, <laughs> representing kingdom in life style, but normally it would be like in style, but mm. in lifestyle because lifestyle is something that's key. Um, so yeah, so our our, our 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 tag is representing kingdom and lifestyle, and with that, what we are basically saying is that we're coming together and we're we're serving this great big God together when Mm. you say kingdom i'm not talking about denomination Mm. i'm not talking about your church i'm not talking about that church i'm saying kingdom so when um 
I was thinking of a clothing line because we was going to do like a New Year clothing line and then it easily switched and our whole, um, my whole vision was changed for, for, um, for our direction of what we was doing. Yeah. And God gave me kingdom over everything. And um, kingdom over everything is simply like representing our Father in heaven here on earth. Mm. You know when the Bible says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And we pray about it and we say it all the time. And that's what the kingdom is. It's, it's coming together as a body yeah. of, of Christ, as the body of Christ, working together. Um, again, you may be at a different church than I am, yeah. um, but we're still working together. I feel like we, we've had a generation previous before who was very stuck in, in ways where it was like, we are so-and-so, we worship here. Right. We are you so-and-so, do, yeah. we worship here. And it reminds me of the woman at the well, where it's like, well, these people worship here. These wor- people worship here. Who do I worship? Where, how do I worship? And, and, and Jesus' response is, well, the hour has come where the true worshippers shall worship in spirit and in truth. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say in, in a live city church. It doesn't say in any other denomination. Mm. It says in spirit and mm. in truth, meaning that, that all these other names, these church branches, like those names fade away. When we get when we when we meet back our father, we're not coming. He's, we're not saying, okay, and who are you? Well, I'm Vody Morgan from a live scene church. Um, yeah, uh, there should be a couple of my members in there. No, he, he's saying he's saying like we are one body. He's like you're doing this. We're doing this thing where it's like that denomination, that denomination, those people, those people, and we're 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 breaking up something that God has brought so together. True. So, um, so in that, when, when we look at um, Kingdom Over Everything, that's what it is. So, like, when, when we put the brand out there, it's a thing where it's like, yo, everybody can wear it. And when people's like, oh, is it your church's thing? And I go, no, it's everyone's thing. Mm. It's like, if you want to wear it, you can wear it. Um, and one of the things that, that was a strong push for me is that I also believe that the church should also be um, big business options. Let's bring it back. I also think that um, churches should have business, businesses and business yeah, ideas. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that, um, that I was kind of upset with is like, I'm like, yo, when I, when I gave my vision to the church, I was like, I think the church should be having, like, we should be owning hotels. Mm-hmm. We should be owning like, you know how, how people be like owning a whole strip. I'm like, yo, why can't the church just own that whole strip? And like um, uh, clothes stores and barber shops and stuff like that. And that was my vision towards like a life city church. This is something that we want to accomplish. It's something we want to do in the earth. Mm. In the earth. So um so in wanting to do all of this in the earth, I was like, um, with the clothing line, it's just that's that's the message. It's like, yo, we're coming together to bring something into this earth. We're gonna bring that representative in this earth. So mm. yeah, that's that's what the clothing line is about. I love it. I love it. So, mm. what are your plans for now? We, we've, we've covered a lot. Mm. We've covered a lot. So, mm. what are your plans for the rest of 2020? 2020! So, we was meant to have a, um, uh, a live night called Poetry and Harmony. Um, mm. It was just a real stripped back night where um, uh, I wrote some songs that I felt went really well with poetry. Um, and if you look throughout the archives of our projects, um, you will see like different points in like New Year's history of just music. Mm-hmm. Like not everything's the same, mm. and I don't want everything to be the same. I want it. I want to evolve. I want to do something different. So this was a project that was going to be poetry and harmony meets like poetry in gospel. It just comes everything up. comes together. So um, so we was working on that, and then we was meant to have like our live show, and then COVID mm. hit. Deacon COVID tried to um, switch off the lights, but um, shake the church you know keys. what I'm saying? <laughs> shake the church keys. Like, it's getting luck off tonight, uh, but but um, that happened. But during the season, it just gave me time with the project. Remember, I was talking to you about process. Yeah, and I got to process it, and I was like. I'm, a, I'm actually happy that it happened because there's actually more I want to do with it. Mm. So, um, so now we're just working on that Poetry and Harmony project, which I think is going to be absolutely amazing. Mm. Um, we as well was meant to do a live recording um, this year, but um, that's, that's going to happen. But 
I don't think it'd be 2020. Okay. Maybe 2021. But um, but yeah, I think our focus for New Year is um, is um, is the Poetry and Harmony project um, for a live city church. Listen, we're just trying to bring in bring in all those that are just lost and all those that are just in a place where it's like, I need a place that I can be loved mm. and be pastored and uh, and be led. You know what I'm saying? And just have a community that I can be accountable with and accountable to. Yeah. So um, that's that stays the same with a Life City Church. We're, we're constantly building and I believe we're in our building and hiding stage. Mm -hmm. So where people are like, oh, like, how come like, you should like put this out there and put that out there? And I'm like, we're, we're still in our building stages. We're not trying to like, you know, be out there like, like, yeah, like do this and do that. And like trying to make this scene. We're just leading as God or le uh, following as God leads mm -hmm. basically. So that's with Life Street Church. For me, Voldy Morgan, um, I'm still doing uh, this one choir tour. Um, where it's going over to Europe, teaching some songs that I've written and nice. um, seeing these amazing people sing these amazing songs. Um, got in a bit because one of the events I was really looking forward to this year has been pushed back to next year, but I'm excited about that Yeah, because it's still happening. I'm um, meant to be um, working with um, Donald Lawrence in Germany. and In fact, and in um, Denmark, there was two different events, but... Um, I was a bit guided about that because I was really looking forward to that. But that's moving to next year. So look out for that. That's going to be awesome. Um, for me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. <laughs> As for me and my house, that's, that's it. We're, we're, we just continue to serve the Lord and just, you know, just continue to be us, really. I like yeah. it. Last question. Mm -hmm. What piece of encouragement would you give to yourself with where you're at in life now? Mm. So what I would encourage myself with now. Mm -hmm. um, my encouragement to myself is this is not just for me now, mm. but it's for a generation that's following me. So be careful with how you treat it. Mm. And I think that's the encouragement that I would give myself that although you're doing good, you're doing great and all these things are happening, um, in, in all of this greatness just be careful with how you treat it because your son's following behind you your mm. son's watching um, and as they watch and they see great things happening you want to leave a great stamp and continue to leave a great stamp of, of genuine a genuine heart and mm. honesty because um, one thing I've learned is that not everybody is who they appear to be and that's something I would encourage myself constantly is just continue to be you you mm. are enough Mm. You are enough. I am enough. So, yeah. Foley Morgan, thank you very much. Thank you very much. This has been a great conversation. Mm. Hope you've taken the gems that Volney has been dropping. Mm. CEO, pastor, you know, choir director, songwriter. I'm just giving you the title. Uh, <laughs> that come with his name. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll have more conversation with H coming very, very soon.